Hey, what's up y'all? Welcome to Lunchtime with Heavy Cardboard, where we teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx. Today, we are bringing y'all, uh, I think, an important game in the career of Uwe Rosenberg. So we are bringing y'all Glass Road, designed by the, the uh, Hall of Fame designer, I think is a fair point, Uwe Rosenberg, uh, published by Z-Man and a host of other publishers at this point. I'm your host, Edward Euler. I'm Jess. Come on, you know who we are at this <laughs> point, right? All right, so uh, yeah, before we get started, a big thanks to our 748 patrons help make all of this possible. Thank you. If you want to support the show, check out PledgeHC.com. If you think what we do here is worthy of your support, so, uh, support us over on PledgeHC.com. Don't forget, as always, I say this as does every other person on YouTube, like and subscribe down below. It helps us and it helps you guys yeah. be notified whenever the show goes live. So Glass Road. I played this many, many moons ago and was eh on it. Now, I'm being honest. I really, I really felt like this was the turning point game for Uwe Rosenberg, where his and my paths diverged. Ooh, interesting. So that was back in 2013. That was early on-ish. Yeah. Ish. Mm -hmm. or maybe 2014. Anyway, around there. How about you? Did you really enjoy this when you first played it? I did. I learned it at my local game store um, in Saugus, and they uh, they taught it to me. I picked it up and confused at first. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I know what I'm doing. Oh, <laughs> ruined everything. Oh, this is great. And they had one copy on the shelf. So... I told him to ring it up before we even finished the game. Much to the disdain of the other person playing, because they were like, I wanted that, so, yeah. Did you like Rochambeau, or? No, I looked it up and I saw that it was being reprinted. This was only maybe two, two and a half years ago, so there a reprint was coming out, so I was like, you can get it later, you'll be fine, so. <laughs> I took it. <laughs> and we're playing with her copy, because I did not have a copy of this. This so is we're true, actually, this is true. Uh, here we go. So, um, you so from then until now, that shelf copy made it to the shelf. Th there you go. <laughs> okay. So I'm, uh, we played this earlier today, and I'm curious and looking forward to being able to discuss uh, how views may or may not have changed. That's the thing. The is, yeah, years. do I still feel the same about it? And do I Perhaps. still feel the same about it? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, that's a lie. I do know, but let's go ahead. And <laughs> you play don't the game. know. Exactly. We know. That's we'll the key. let you know. <laughs> so, are you ready? <laughs> yeah. All right. Hopefully, y'all are ready. Let's go ahead and dig into Uwe Rosenberg's. Wait, Glass you didn't do Road. over and under. Two, well, not yet, because okay, okay. I have to... Do, 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 do. I'm curious. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> All right, go, go. All right, Glass and Bricks. The Glass Road is a 150-mile-long path through the Bavarian forest near the border to the Czech Republic. It reminds, or it reminds of the great times of glass production. When you travel along the Glass Road today, you can still feel the heat of this handcraft that was omnipresent in many arborous areas of the early modern age. Glass and bricks were used long before the Middle Ages. Over 7,000 years ago, the Egyptians already knew of glass. The Sumerians in the Middle East, on the other hand, are said to have invented and used bricks about 6,000 years ago. Then it goes on to the Romans, etc., etc. Today, there are no forest glass works left in the Bavarian forest, but the glass road still leads to a number of locations of former and current glass production. Today, there aren't any brick fields left in the Black Forest. However, there are some brick works left open, giving evidence of the long history of brick making. So what is it we're looking at here in Glass Road? Well, a number of things, as you can tell. For those that are unfamiliar, you have a number of different boards here. So we have the building board, which shows three different types of buildings on it in the supply stacks for the three different types of buildings on it. Each of us has our own landscape board in which has various uh, areas on the board as well as areas for us to build our buildings. So above the main uh, building board, we have the four types of landscape tiles that are in the game. The big one being the forest tiles. Then we have the ponds or the lakes, the sand pits, and the groves as well. 
and the aforementioned three different types of buildings. The blue ones here in the top row with the blue parchment kind of area behind it is our processing buildings. The immediate buildings, these are the ones with the kind of fawn colored or beige colored mm -hmm. uh, parchment paper. These are one-time use buildings. The blue ones you can use throughout the game. And finally, the kind of tan-ish orange-ish, brown-ish buildings are bonus buildings or in-game buildings that will score at the end of the game. Now, everybody has their own kind of tableau here, this being mine, Jess is being over on the left-hand side. So each of us has a production wheel. There are two types of production wheels. There is a glass production wheel, which these resources will help in the production of glass, whereas these resources will help in the production of brick. Now, each of the different resources, we have glass, sand, uh, porridge or oatmeal or food is mm -hmm. what it is, charcoal, water, and wood, and then we have bricks as well as charcoal, clay, and again, porridge. So you'll notice that the porridge or food and the charcoal are on two different uh, wheels here. That's going to be an important distinction. Everybody has as well 15, uh, their own identical set of 15 cards, and then their board predetermined setup, and you can see where the setup is here. It shows actually where each of these things go at the beginning of the game, along with two starting areas from which to be able to build buildings. So that's everything that you're looking at, and of course the first player marker, but you know, hey, we're going to use ours, so we'll go ahead and get rid of that one. There we go. All right. So how do you actually play the game? Well, in Glass Road, we're going to try and hopefully succeed in producing glass and bricks over four building periods. Now, a building period is a round in this game. Aside from glass, you will also need to produce bricks and collect wood and clay to build buildings. Only the value of your buildings will determine your final score and whether you will win the game or not. To, ac to accomplish the task, you will need the help of a variety of specialists, which is your deck of cards. When choosing your specialist, try to anticipate which ones your opponents will choose to be able to use your own more effectively. Yep. All right. So as I said, the game plays out over four rounds. There isn't a variant in which you can play over five rounds, but we're gonna play this over four rounds, okay? Now, in each round, each of us has our choice, our entire choice of the 15 cards in our deck. And as I mentioned, they are identical, and I have some out here as examples to be able to describe them. What we're going to do in a given round is we are going to choose five of our cards for our hand of cards. And then starting with the first player, now, this being a two-player game, it's a little bit different. Uh, in a two-player game, we're going to, whoever's the first player is going to play one of their cards face up. Mm -hmm. And if their opponent has, or Jess in this case, if Jess has the exact same card in her hand, she must play it to the right side of her tableau. And in that case, we're both going to get limited use of that card as opposed to the full use of the card. Mm -hmm. Then, a uh, turn will alternate. She will play the next card, same rule applying, going back and forth until one of us has run out of cards. In the normal three and four player game, what it is is everybody will turn one card face down and then they'll activate it in turn order, turning them face up in turn order. But as it is, this being a two player, we don't need to worry about that. Right. So before I go any further, we probably ought to talk about the different cards in our decks. Now, as I said, there are 15 different cards and they're going to have, some will have prerequisites, some will not. And all will give us some sort of benefit, be it resources or the ability to build buildings. So let's go ahead. And as I said, these are identical between all the players' decks. So the Slash and Burn Farmer. Anytime you see this kind of red parchment area, that shows a prerequisite that must be paid or discarded or spent or fill in the right word in order to be able to take the action. So the Slash and Burn Farmer says you must remove one forest. What does that mean? That means one of the large forests from our tableau we must remove and then it will open up a couple of building spaces, but that would be the prerequisite to then be able to gain resources here. All right, so we would gain either 
to charcoal, or possibly and to food. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whereas here, this would be paying one charcoal. So now would be a good time to talk about our production wheels. So whenever you gain resources for any of these resources, you're going to actually move them up. These counters go from range from zero all the way up to seven. We're talking about these resources on the right side or the clockwise side of the hands of the clock is right. a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. So then here we have any anytime you gain one of these resources, you're going to move it up that many steps. Anytime you're going to spend a resource, you're going to move it back down towards zero, obviously. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if I have two food here and I spend one food, I would move this down to one. If I were to gain one food, I would move it up to three. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple. Right. However, <laughs> now is a point where I want to talk about the glass and the bricks that are on the other side of the wheels. Now, they will always stay in the smaller area of the wheels, and those will range from zero to three. So that is the max that you can have of a, be it glass or brick, whereas any of the other resources is a max of seven, technically 14 for food and charcoal since it's on two different wheels. Mm -hmm. So anytime there is a space available to push the wheel without it pushing a resource, it must do so. Right. So here we go. So let's talk about this slash and burn farmer. If I discarded this one forest off of my board, I would be able to, uh, provided that Jess did not also have this card in her, ta in her hand, to be able to do both of those. So I would get two charcoal and two uh, food. Now, with those being on different or on uh, multiple wheels, I can choose all or one in which to be able to gain those resources. If I choose charcoal here, I go one, two. Now, I could not go one charcoal, one charcoal, but I could go charcoal on this one, food on this one. When you gain a resource, it's always all on one wheel. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. All right, but you'll notice now there is the availability for this to move without actually pushing a resource. So boom, like that, I now have one brick. Mm -hmm. Okay, now if it just so happened that then on a subsequent action, I gain a couple of clay that will then immediately move, etc. And then as I gain more and more resources, let's say it were something like this to where I would gain potentially two more brick. Well, if you look, I push it once there. Well, now if I were to gain any more, I would be pushing a resource. Mm -hmm. You cannot do so. No. Okay. So that is it. We are maxed at three bricks and here as such. Mm -hmm. Now, there is one sneaky little catch about this game that I do want to stress. I'm not going to talk strategy too much, but I do want to point out that I have one clay, mm -hmm. but if I do gain any charcoal here, let's say I gain a charcoal, I then afterwards move the wheel. I now lose the charcoal that I just gained, and I did have one clay. I no longer have clay, right. but I have a brick. That is important to note when it comes to being able to build these buildings up here. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So, any questions about the production wheels here? No. All right, moving on. So here you'll notice that you would have to spend one charcoal. You could spend it from either of the two wheels and either gain two food or I should say gain two food and or gain one food per pond tile. How many ponds do I have? I have two, so I would gain a maximum of four food, provided that Jess did not also have the card to play down, which I will talk about more in a little bit. The pit worker has no prerequisite, says you may gain a pit and one clay. So gaining a pit, well, that's why we have that stack of pits up the top. I then could go ahead and put this down on any available space, say I do so there, because the reason I might want to do that is I'm going to gain either sand or clay based on however many sand pits that I have. Pretty, pretty obvious stuff, pretty self-explanatory. Moving on to the supplier, says take two of any resource and your opponents get one of those. Okay, easy enough, and can build a building. Well. I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple of one of each of these buildings over here and I will go ahead and grab say these. So now that we've explained our cards, let's go ahead and talk about 
the building tiles here. All right, three different types of buildings. Processing, immediate, and in-game scoring. Immediate, what does that mean? It means they're one-time use. The prerequisites or the cost in which to build them are over here on the left-hand side. If there is a wood cost, it will be shown here. Well, you'll notice there's nothing here, but you'll notice that these two both have a wood cost. It will always be at the top. Mm -hmm. The second one is glass. You'll notice that none of these show glass, so none of them will cost glass. Clay will always be in the third spot, and brick will always be in the bottom spot. So this building, this clay depot, or depot if you prefer, one clay and one brick, you would then immediately have to spend them. Oh, wait, I can't build it because I don't have the, I could spend the clay, but I don't have the brick to spend. Hashtag plan better, but let's <laughs> say I could. I then will gain two clay per empty space adjacent to this building. So once I build it, I then place it out here, and I would gain, gain two clay for every space adjacent. Adjacency in this game is always orthogonally adjacent, meaning this space, this space, and this space, but those are not empty. Ergo, I would gain two clay. This is not adjacent because, well, it's diagonal. And then, last but not least, in-game points are in the little bag in the top right-hand corner. So once this is done, you're not going to flip it over, but just know that once this is done, you can no longer use this building because it's an immediate building. You know that because it's that tan or fawn color. In-game scoring, pretty self-explanatory. Spend three wood when I build it. And then at the end of the game, I'm going to score four points. That's what this little star means is it's going to be a variable amount. Four points for each four groves if I have four groves in my tableau. Well, I have two. So maybe I'm going to want to gain two other groves to be able to score that for four points at the end of the game. Otherwise, it's not going to be worth jack squat. Right. All right. Any questions? Good. Moving on. Now, the processing buildings. Processing buildings, this is an anytime action, meaning anytime after you've built this, you can do this, even on someone else's turn. Spend two wood, two bricks. This turns one charcoal into two clay, and it's worth three points at the end of the build or at the end of the uh, game. Easy enough. You can do that at any time. Any questions about the gist of the buildings? As I said, the game will take place in which we're going to play a card from our five that are in our hands. So in this case, let's say I play the Slash and Burn Farmer. Now, if Jess does not have that card in her hand, then she says, okay, continue. I may pay the cost and then I may take all of the bonus or all of the advantages, all the benefits of that card. I get to do all of it. If I choose not to pay the cost, I get to do none of it. If it doesn't have a cost, you still, it's always a may. However, when I play this card, if this is in Jess's hand, she's going to play it out there to the right of her tableau. To the right, there you go. Right, there are two slots over there that you'll notice little cutouts for. Because this can happen a maximum of two times per round. When I play this card, I announce it. Jess says, oh, I do have it. And she must play it if she has it in her hand, if she has a slot available in which to do so. In that case, I then may pay the prerequisite, and then I get to do either or in that case. Mm -hmm. And then Jess must pay the, or may pay the prerequisite, and she can do either or. And then it becomes her turn. And the exact same thing happens. If, I, if she plays a card that I have in my hand, I must play it out here. If it just so happens that she has done this twice, in which I've played a card in which she has now done this twice. If I play a subsequent card on another round, and she's already played two out here, she does not play it again, because there's only slots for two of them. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So we're going to continue to alternating actions until one of us has run out of cards. That will signify the end of the round. We will switch the first player marker to the other person. We will take all of the cards back into our hands, and then we will choose five of the 15, rinse and repeat, and then go into final scoring. Final scoring is these three printed buildings onto our tableau if they have not been covered up by buildings that show a brick outline on their buildings as such some of these do then 
we will go ahead and tally up all of our scores. You do not round because you'll notice this is a half point per sand. Whoever has the most points wins. That's the gist of it. There may be a couple other little details here and there. We'll go over as we encounter them. Any questions, J-Rex? Um, just to make sure, it was a little bit ambiguous, that Forester's Lodge, it actually does have to be four in a two-by-two two grid, not Fair, four. Uh, anyway. Correct, yes, it has to be. I knew you be, knew that, right, but right. it does have to be yep. as laid Good out. Good point. There we go. That's it. Any questions? That's it. All right, cool. See. You want to grab your cards? Uh, I shall. Let's see. Place your bets. Um, over on, on Glory to Realms, I'm going to set at two and a half. I don't think it's going to be that high, do you? No, I don't. And Stephanie from Geeky Girl Games joined us. So hi, Stephanie. Hi. And Peter from the Buzz Davis. Oh, Host, hey. Postman Peter's here. All hi, right, Peter. what's up? <laughs> Apparently we have a package we need to go pick up we that's do. at the post office. I so. mean, we should do a thing like uh, Mr. Rogers where he like stops by, delivers. <laughs> we could. There we go. Hey. Play a lunchtime oh, game hey. with our postman. There we go. I, I, <laughs> the option is there, Peter, if you want. Yes. All right. Okay. I don't know why you're shaking them. I, uh, why shuffling. am I shuffling? I don't know. I don't you know. get to pick I, from all of them. You really do. You're used right. to like. So taking a look at the buildings five. that are out here. So hold yeah. on one second. Mm -hmm. So the immediate ones get four wood. Nice. The two clay, as I showed. This is two uh, on adjacent empty spaces. <laughs> you must have them. Okay. It's worth four points. So, wow. Notice the, uh, the Los Plateau is minus one point at the end of the game. Uh, a clay pit on each adjacent empty space. Okay, end game points. So this is a better version of the Glassmaker's Colony. This will actually be built physically on top of it, so you don't need a space, but it makes it twice as valuable. So there's that. The plant nursery, contiguous groves, one point. Uh, one point per two wood. Remove two buildings from your private offer, which that comes into play with, what's his name? The Feudal Lord. You get a personal display of ones. Okay. Again, I'm shuffling. I don't know why. Yeah, it's just something to do with your hands, I right. think. Um, that would be nice. Hmm. Oh, this is, this is hard. Wow. Okay. All right. So. All right. And so we begin. Oh, I, my bad. I, uh, yes, there we girl. Go. Sorry about that. Thanks. Happens. Sorry. No, we don't want to hear Edward sing. Okay? There we go. Yes, we do. Seems, seems, Always. Uh, seems pretty split right now. Oh, no, it's going hardcore J-Rex. Yeah, I'm not surprised. They shouldn't be bitten us. Okay. J-Rex is in a slump. J-Rex needs more coffee. Oh. Um... I got bit in our game earlier today in which I... You won our two, game earlier, so I don't want to hear that. But I'm just saying, on one round, I had two cards I couldn't play from my hand. And you still beat me. By a point. And your point is... I won by a point. You did, though. That's the thing. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to do that, though. Um... All right, that'll give me what I need there. Yes, I like that. Moving that's not a bad thing. Because I know that's going to happen, right? Sure. And... Then it's the order in which you play your cards that matters very much. Okay, I still need that, which that will grant me that, which there. It would not be a bad thing to get this. I think that might be a bit aggressive. There. I have selected... It's better to do that. Done. Oh, and then to be able to... There we go. Oops. Crooked. Do that isn't there bad. Or right. I could do this. 
Johnny says, that's the best when somebody wins and tells you how they screwed up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I did so badly when I beat you. <laughs> that's what you basically said. Fair enough. Oh, I do, I do have an extra pit. Thank you. From the example. All right, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, how do you think I won last time? Okay. Your chalice go. All right. It's your chalice. Oh, oh, oh we're, we are going to use the chalice? Yes, okay. look. It even holds Davis very well. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Yep. Got it, got it, got it, got it. All right. <sighs> All right. So, yeah, you've chosen your five? Uh-huh. Uh... The order in which... Yes. All right. Uh, oh, wait. Hold on. What? Hold on. No, hold on. Wait, no. We didn't randomize it. So do you want sticker side or blank side? Choose. Um, blank. Oh, sticker Good. side. See, there All we right. go. I'll it's go. randomized. I'll You're still first. first. There we go. <laughs> All right. So I will go with the slash and burn farmer. I am not surprised that that happened. Okay, so I activate first. So I will go ahead and clear this one out there. And I will choose the two food option, and I would choose it from here. So one, two food. Done. Your go. Okay, this is interesting. I'm definitely going to get rid of one. Do I want the porridge? How or do you have any meat if you haven't finished your pudding? Do I want to chance it and do that? Oh, this is tricky. Yeah, plan. We'll see how well that works for me, but that's all right. I'm going to go with two. There. Oh, yeah, Eric. Uh, he says, excited to see all the grain con in two weeks. I can't believe it's only two weeks away, by the way. Yeah, he's playing. I already have a game of uh, Lovelace and Babbage playing with Jess. Which came hold in on. yesterday. Hold on. Oh, stop. Yeah, no, because <laughs> hold on. This is something I wanted They're to point out. They're not here for this. I know, you're not here for this, but you know what? It's my <laughs> show, I get to do this. So, um, for those that don't know, Lovelace and Babbage, uh, designed by Scott Alms. Um, yes. Lead design, or lead developer on it. So last night, we had a big unboxing of it down in the uh, dining room, and uh, it turned out really good, didn't it? It did. It, the pictures are really nice. Rule book looks good. So, I'm really proud of her. So I thought that was really cool. So it's a big deal to me. So well done. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. And now that I've embarrassed her yes, completely, here completely. we go. All right. So slash and burn farmer. <laughs> yes. I I chose my resource. I moved up here. There we go. Done. Your your yes. play. All go right. ahead. And remember, we play until one of us has played all of our cards. Normally, it would only be three cards that we get played, which means the That's only way you too. can get them both or all five is if you piggyback on other people's actions as well. Okay. Um, Thank you, I Michael, think for catching that. Right. I want to do this. Hey, Shaz. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, pit worker. Yep. Okay. I mean, he's good. So we only get. I only get to do one of it. Correct. And you choose first. I'm gonna get the. <laughs> let me see. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> All right. I can get that later. Uh, I'm going to get the two clay. I have two pits, so I'm going to get two clay. Uh, all right. I had a plan, and i got to remember what it was. Give me just a minute. Right. That was it. I am going to get the two sand, because I have two pits. So one, two, and... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So that was her plan. Mm -hmm. So I'm now up. So the plan here... Because I don't have that and that. I could do that, I think. Can I? I could. Ooh. Ooh. I did have a plan straight out straight away. Do I want to follow it? Um hmm. Okay, I might call an audible here real quick. So if I do, I'm going to play the charcoal burner. I think they're brothers, by the way. 
by the way. Uh, I have the charcoal burner. Ah, that's unfortunate. It is. All right, so uh, I will pay my one wood, <sighs> and I will choose to get three charcoal. Same. And which one do exactly. I want? Exactly. Good will get question. This one. I, I really wanted I... both. Why did you have to do that? Yeah. One, two, three, as did I, which that then pivots. Done. And now Jess does her piggyback. I am going to do my piggyback. <laughs> Vincent, stay on target. Stay on There's target. There's no target. I need a target. Uh, uh, hey, uh, Tony. Uh, uh. Oh, I hope the gig goes well tonight. <sighs> Darn it. Um... Yeah, this is tricky. All right, I'll do this one. One, two, three. By the way, earlier, uh, Christopher Clark. Oh, Clay was here. Hi, or it might still be. Hi, Clay. Um, Christopher, now, because of the uh, what happened in Shobu, he's like, Edward had an extra Clay second like second column like third row like so we knew exactly where it was so we weren't like wait where where does it move what oh, so, oh okay i appreciate the uh the attention to detail um, there um so. i think so jess is gonna be able to play all of her cards am i yeah i think i don't know what i want here well, i went first maybe not yeah you will <sighs> actually i won't be able to all right, Compliment. supplier. Oh, well, maybe I spoke too soon. See. Wow, we really did. That's crazy that we actually had four of the five so far the same. That yeah, so unlikely. I won't be able to play it. Yeah, I was like, how do That's you know unlikely. this yet? Yeah, okay. All right. Um, I'm going to do the bottom and build. I'll take the top right production, okay. which is two wood. And two bricks. And two bricks. Yes, ma'am. Stanley. Stanley, two bricks. Uh-huh. Sure. Whatever you say. And you can do that at any time. Uh, mm, yep, I can. Uh, okay, I too shall build. And? Do I stay on target? Yes, we stay on target all right so i'm going to build the plant nursery here and we'll see how well this works but that's the plan i'm going to spend one wood and two glass there we go and this is going to be one point per contiguous grove so i now have a goal set for me all right interesting so um, now Final card mm -hmm. is going to be the fish farmer. Do you have the fish farmer in your hand? No. All right. So I'm going to pay one charcoal, and I get to do both. So I'm going That's to get two food and then another two food. Now, those are different actions. So therefore, I can split them up two and two or take it all on one. And... One, two... One, two. Done. All right, that's the end of the round. So there's the first round. So we're going to refill the buildings out here. We do not light, so we have the warehouse. One point per warehouse marker on the four, five, six, or seven. And... Per resource marker. I was Correct. like, what? Sorry, where, what's a warehouse marker? Sorry, where sorry, is that? that. <laughs> In the farmstead. So a pond... Uh, turns into two uh, food and a water. All right, so take your five cards So the, back. the pond gives you, or you? I will have to look that one up. So the farmstead? Yes. There's a really good handy dandy reference in the back. It looks like, okay, it looks like you have to remove a pond that's, and you get that. that, yeah. I believe so, so. Yep. Remove one pond to gain two food and a water. Yep, all right. So you'll notice I played all five, Jess played four, but now she's the first player. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you doing? Oh. That's where my cards go. There you go. I'll do this. There we go. All right. All right. Huh. Mm. Take care, Michael. All right. 
Okay. Another anytime action is removing any of these tiles, except for the forest. Forest can only be removed by certain uh, events. up and then I'll get onto my cards. Mistakes were made. Yeah, I don't know. see that already. Don't but know. Okay. Um, Maybe this. All right, let's check. Also an option. Um, oh, which one? Which one? Which one? You know what? Actually, <sighs> this one time can I play six cards? This is always what you say. All right. Okay, done. Final answer. That's it. Arg. Oh. <laughs> Arg. Whoa. <laughs> okay. And then that. Right, Vincent, if you only plan for every card only getting one of the actions, feels like a bonus when you get them both. That is spot on. Yep. Okay. Your honor, ma'am. Choose... Pawn Builder. Uh, you may do both. Oh, that's surprising. <laughs> See, there you go. There's a case in point. Not really what I thought was going to happen. Um, and you can do them in either order, remember. But obviously, if you're going to... Yeah. I don't think I care if they're adjacent. And then I'm going to get three. One, two, three. All right. Woodcutter. You may do both. Awesome. All right. So I will remove my castle, which makes me sad, but that's all right. And we're going to get four wood. One, two, one, two. Fini. Mm hmm. Oh, right. Uh, forest manager? Yep. Darn it. <laughs> I agree with that. Arg. All right. Well, that's not good. Oh, I'm in trouble because I'm not <laughs> going to be able to. Okay. So do I take two of those? I think this was how I was going to save myself. Um, I'll take two wood. 
All right, I am going to take the other option, which is to place a grove, and I will get one wood. And this moves. Done. All right, so that was your second yes. place. I will... I think so. Hmm. Carpenter. Sweep the leg? I have no idea. I don't even know what he's doing over here, so. Um, carpenter, you can do both. Okay, so I will go ahead and get rid of that forest. I will get a wood, and then I can build a building, and I will build that building right there, which is going to cost me three wood. One, two, three, which Forester's Lodge, four points if a grid of four. Done. Mm -hmm. Slash and burn. All you. They don't want me to let you do the forester oh, thing okay. and take the buildings right. and stuff. But I feel like that's not a really winning strategy. I feel like if all then I'm doing is blocking defense. him, right. then yeah. I get zero points, which is not great. So two and two. Do I want to move this one? I think I do. So one, two. I'm gonna do that one first. And then give me another glass. Sure. One, two. Okay. I feel like I have kind of planned a little bit poorly in one regard. Um is I'm Oh, I just gave myself new wood. Can I change that back? Sure. One, two. See, this is what's really tricky, tricky. about that. Yep. Yeah, that. It has to be that. Because you, otherwise you, all those, no you would lose all those resources, right? So there's that. Mm-hmm. Hey, Void. Uh, you actually can probably pick it up from playing, honestly. Um, I will play the Charcoal Burner. Radio, I will pay one and gain three charcoal. One, two, hold on. Hmm. Yeah. One, two, three, done. So I really don't want to pay the wood. <laughs> you don't have to. I know, but then I don't get the three. Oh, oh well, shit, <laughs> shit. Uh, well, it doesn't matter anyway, because, yep, so nothing. All right. Um, supplier. Uh, all you. Oh, see, and now I would have been hey, Luke. Um, all right, so I'm going to take. Is that your last card? Yes. I'm going to take. Is it? Really? Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm, okay, um, I'm going to take... I'll wait for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take... Do I want to take porridge and move up the brick? Can you do those in either order? Yep. Okay. Then I'm going to purchase a tile. This one. Oh, first I'm going to do my production thing. Pull this back. Get two clay. That gives me enough to do the one, two... One and three. One, two, three to get this. I'll put that here. Okay. And then the other is take two goods. Which two goods do I want? And I think... If I could vote for one, I have one of mine. I don't want to do that one. <laughs> you can tell me, so I make I could, sure so I so you don't. don't do it right. Yeah, no thanks. I don't want to do that. I don't... That would be really good. Okay. I should get more of those, especially since I couldn't last time. Is that what I should do? I will. I'm going to do two of these. Charcoal? So yeah. So I get a charcoal. I will choose it there. Kay. Done. All right, well, I don't get to play my last card, so that's that. That is halfway home. 
All right. So what do we have there? Convert. The, the builder's hut. Grove into clay. And this is for sand pits. All right. So now we choose. So I'm first again. Okay. Ugh, this is, ugh, I can't do this even. That'll go like that. But that means it's only one. Yeah, okay. I think that's Oh, that's getting. terrible. Okay. I mean, I know what you're, I'm trying to pay attention to what you're doing now. So I know what you're gonna do on one of them because you kind of have to at this point. Kind of telegraphed it a bit. No, you really didn't. It's just that you, from your board in these, you have no choice. You've got to get some more of those. Groves. Sm yep. Groves, like you, bad. How do you get rid of that sand pit? Yeah, I do this. <laughs> you can just throw away. Yeah. Okay. You can always remove. You just can't do that to force. Force. Okay. I was, that's. Um. So there's that. Do uh. Does that help me at all? I mean, it's not bad. Okay. So I need to do that. So that's not bad for me and blocks you. Um, I'm gonna wanna do that. But now that means I get That could be bad for me. Or use that knowledge to know you're not what you're doing exactly. so I exactly. don't do right. them. Exactly, right. It's ugh. Oh. block or not block. But I don't really want you getting double actions, but then I could get double actions. It's tricky. All right, that's a definite. And. Oh, what if we do that? That's an interesting idea, right? That'll help with that. I do have that, though. That's actually better. I can do something about that. But I need to be able to do something here. Right. Oh, okay. okay so that's not bad, actually. So block one of them. Because that'll give me what I need. Because I can take care of that and that to get the one. But I can't. Oh, God. I need to make sure. Sure, I can get another one of those. Maybe. Likely. And I could do that if I do this. Okay. No. Actually, this is better than that. I need another way to get that, just in case. Oh! That's not bad. I think that's five. Let's see if that does what I want it to do. <sighs> that's at least Ooh. two. All right. And I need three. Yeah, the wheel, the wheel oh. moving is, can be tricky as all get out. All right, don't that's at least two. That. That's two. I don't. So that I don't need, okay. But how am I doing that? Oh, uh, darn it, I forgot one. I have to be able to move that, how? Oh, right, okay, yeah, sure. A moment. That gets me out right there. Done, all right. All right, so round three begins. 
Luke, yeah, it's weighted heavily because the way this resource track works, it's more tricky than you would think. You're, you know, we first played this together and you were like, it's fine, just push I the just, thing, yeah, it's no I, big I, deal. Oops. I don't know why you're, oh, I can't play two of my cards. <laughs> water, water carrier. No. Yes. All right, so I will pay my one food there. Will I? <laughs> no, I'm going to pay my one food Hi, Chisholm, there. Hi, Chisholm, how you doing? All right, so then I'm going to get two water. Uh-huh. One, two, and a wood, one. Then I'm going to get two water, one, two, and a sand there. Done. Hey, Chisholm. <laughs> so this is the one I don't know if you did. That's bad for me. All right, force manager. Of course I did. Okay, good. I should have waited for you to do it, but I can't figure this out. <laughs> My brain. All right. So All what's right. Um, hmm, what should I take? I don't have another way of getting that, so I will do the two porridge. I will go ahead and place that right here. And... Make sure I'm right on this. Yes, and one wood there. All right, so for my second card play now. Cultivator. Yep. That's unfortunate. So I'm going to build a building. I'm going to build the uh, country, not good for me. country house. So that's going to be two wood, one, two, a glass, one, and a brick, one. So now the question is, where do I build it? Do I build it here or do I build it there? And I think the answer, well, we're going to discard this, the sand pit, excuse me, or, no, we're not going to build it here, obviously. If we go there, we can build two groves there, or we could build okay. it here and build two groves there, and that's, that's the answer. We're going to build it there, so we're going to go ahead and build two groves, one, Two. I want. So there's the Forester's Lodge for that. Done. So now Jess. I'm trying to which, decide yep, no which worries. one I want hey, based Craig. on what the cards do. Uh, I guess it doesn't. It's six and one half dozen. There. I'll do. Ugh, can I get? No. No. Oh, that comes from a lake. Um. All right, I'll take a leg. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay, you're, you. uh, you're up. Yep. Mm. Way out. Woodcutter. You're good. Go ahead. One, two, three, four. It doesn't matter in this case, but that was two separate actions. Right. It should so have been one, two, two move, pivot, one, two. and then right. Yeah. Just to explain for everybody at home. Mm -hmm. All right. So back to me. 
I I don't think I'm going to be able to do Uh, hmm, hold on one second, sorry. It might not be too bad. Um, all right, you're going to play the supplier? I didn't notice you took the one I was going after when you built... So that's bad. <laughs> what the country house? That'd be a glory to Rome. Dang oh. it. That's bad. Hmm. All right. Do you have the supplier in your hand, ma'am? I do. I mean, you're killing me. You're always gonna have the supplier. Oh, okay. Oh, you're killing me. That was what I needed to build. Well, there went that idea. Um. Nerd. Hmm. I'm going to take two clay. So you get a free clay, if you wish. Sure. And now you get to do the supplier action. <clears throat> I don't know what to do with them. Those are too much to move. I could take another two clay, but I have an ability to do that. So I guess I could, hmm. Hey, me. There's nothing else out there that's getting perfect. Yeah, the, the, the two levels of this nope. game are manipulating this, but also trying to nope. anticipate what your opponent's going to do to be able to mm. either thwart or piggyback. Possibly both things. Mm. Okay, I'm going to take... So I can already do that. I'll, I'm going to take porridge, I think. One, two. No, because I'm going to get that too. Hmm. I. And you get one of what I get. Right. That's unfortunate. I don't want to give you that. <laughs> oh, I really don't want to give you that. This does impact what I'm. <laughs> okay, so it's not those two. Take that, I guess. Okay, I'll take two. Charcoal? Charcoal. Boo. Boo this woman. Boo. It's not a good plan on my part, but... All right, done. Go All ahead. Right. Slash and burn. And you can do both. Um, do those two porridge. And... Do those two. Okay. And I'm going to drop this and pull this. For your production? Yeah. All right. All right. Final round. And at least Max is that. Grab your cards. Hmm. And uh, turn a food into a glass. The artist colony covers the glassmaker colony. There we go. All right. Exactly. Yeah, James. Um, you have to play the board strength and can't come in with a strategy. That is pretty spot on, sir. Okay. So. Where 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. That. Just in case, right? Yeah. does. That does. I think that's it. I think. Let me look. Whew. All right. And I have that and that, so I need to be able to do that. Just that. But then... There, there, there. Go with it. Done. We'll see if it works out. All right. Is it me? Uh, when you're ready, choose wisely. Godspeed. Carpenter. Mm 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 mm. All you. Wood, and I'm gonna spend a uh, food. Sorry, I did that. I like that. I mean, it's two points, right? So mm -hmm. there's that. All right. Okay. So what was the plan? Stay on target. That. Supplier? Nope. Nice. Two sand. You get a sand, ma'am. And I will go ahead and build the wood carver's house. So that's going to be one glass and one clay. And go ahead and put that right there. Gives me a point for two wood. Done. Hmm. Oh, okay. I need to get that first. Um, slash and burn farmer. All you. Last one. Uh. Um, I'm going to do my pudding first, 
one, two, <laughs> and then... Great nut pudding at yeah. that? Yeah, okay. I think All it right. really matters on this one, so I'll do one, two... Or was I here? One, two, I think so. Okay. Done? Mm-hmm. Vood cutter. Uh, nope. All right, so I will get rid of that one. And that'll be two wood, one, two, and then two wood, one, two. Done. Uh, water carrier? Yet. Spend a food, get two water. Oh. And a wood. Spin. Oh, yeah. Did you want to choose either of those? Because you didn't pick them up. That's a good call. Oh, uh, no. Okay. okay. All Don't right. Worry about it. No harm, no foul. All um, right. Um. Clearly, I wasn't missing them. <laughs> right. All right. All right. That was half. Thanks, then Adam. Then water one, two, and one. Done. Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay. Had a plan. It was for that, but I don't think I need that now. Um, forest manager. Uh, nope. All right. I will place. Place a grove here, get a wood, and then I will get one wood. Hmm, will I? Or do I want, ooh, do I need the brick? Do I need the brick? Do I need the brick? Um, I don't, so I'll just peg out the wood. Done. Pond Builder? Nope. Was that my turn? Yeah, it's my turn to go. All right, so I get a pond. Take care, Luke. And I'll take these. So I have four. One, two, three, four. And for my last guaranteed action, Cultivator. Nope. Get rid of the pond. Place that. Well done. Build. And for the building, I kind of just switch gears on that. Uh, don't know that I am, honestly. Uh, it's optional. I know. I am not done. Oh, you. It's you, right? No, it's, it's yours. Me. Okay. Um, pit worker. Done. Go for it. Okay. Add a pit. Uh, take a clay. And then I'll take the sand, which I max out. Okay. And that's the end of the game. That's it. All right. So uh, you want to go first or me? Sure. Go for it. Um, so, so these first. Sure. Uh, three points for brick, three points for glass, so that's six. Half a point for these, that's three and a half. Round down. Nine and, no, 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 Randy. Nine and a half. Okay. <laughs> nine and a half. And then plus seven. Sixteen and a half. Seventeen and a half. Yep. So seventeen and a half for you. Mm -hmm. Solid score. It feels like I don't. I, I don't have context. Okay. So one zero zero one. Then one point per contiguous grove. So one two three four five six seven eight nine. Then that is thirteen, and three is sixteen. 
Oh, 20. I there missed you that. go. There you go. So yep. 20 to 17. Good game. All right. <laughs> so there we go. All right. So, uh, yeah. Um, thoughts? You start. Okay, sure. Um, so first off, the game plays quicker than you think it does at first. Like, if you don't know how quick this game yeah, can play. I mean, we've been streaming for hour and 15 minutes with a full teach, the mm -hmm. whole nine yards. This is... It's 40, a 45-minute game. 45-minute game, yeah. right? Which, when I think of Uwe Rosenberg, I don't think of that. But no. yes, he has Bonanza and, and other yeah. things. Um, but, yeah, it plays quick, which is a definite positive. There are lots of strategies to be able to employ. However, it does seem that the board and the buildings, that how they come out, um, should, and well, should and will dictate your strategy that yeah. you have. Um, because, I mean, it's probably hard to see, but those are the buildings that we didn't get to on all the three stacks, just about. It's pretty close. So there's huge variability here. You were at 19, I guess. 19? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. There you go. All right. Oh, it was eight for the contiguous, but he was counting the, the one, one point, point that he got glass. for his glass. There you go. It doesn't so matter. actually it was it's 20, fine. Renee. That's fine. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's tough. Uh, the game is hard to be able to, the order in which you do things matters because you can be like, oh, I'll gain the, oh, no, now I'm going to lose. Oh, great, I gained a brick, but now I lost all my clay. So, I need that yeah. clay. So the, the level of planning that goes into this game is deceptively hard. And I will say, no, I'll save that for the end. Um, <laughs> but I like that there are essentially two or three different kind of mini games within this. There's the, okay, getting an engine going, what am I going after? Mm -hmm. Then what are you going after and trying to play off of that? And then the other thing is, okay, kind of like what you were doing towards the end of the game there, Okay, I know what strategy, or the second half of the game, I know what strategy you're going for, Edward, so do I try and, you know, piggyback off of that? Because I know right. I'll be able to get extra actions off of that. Yeah. Uh, as long as it doesn't impede what you're doing, absolutely you should be doing that because you mm, you end up getting yes or no. you end up getting more actions that way, and more actions is always a well, positive thing, right? But then in this last round, we got a ton of actions because we didn't overlap. So also not overlapping is another way to get more actions because not overlapping means that you're going to get two of Double. each and you have yeah. a little bit more control yep. if you can plan and say, okay, I know that I'm not going to overlap. So mm -hmm. round three, yep, I overlapped with you a lot on purpose. That didn't feel as good though because some of the things I'm getting just to block you weren't what I needed. So now I'm adjusting my focus, whereas in this last round, I could pretty much say, I know he's not doing these five. So I'm gonna grab these and I know I get these. And I even ended up with extra sand, right? Um, and so the things that I like about it, so these are interesting. What comes out Do, what for work? the oh, building what tiles are interesting. Production's great because they're gonna give you this ability to um, change things uh, that are gonna help you with your engine and they can be worth a lot of points. So looking at the points that they're just worth as a tile and then what they're going to do for you and then trying to match that up with something, something I usually overlook and I think that's hurt me in the past. Having a solid one, at least one, production tile to be able to go in, I think they call them processing tiles. But right, I call yeah, them production. yeah, we're pretty six of them I have done. Exactly, right. uh, having that to be able to create an engine is pretty key and as long as that gives you some points, I think that that helps you. And flexibility, right? Yes. The instant ones, I feel like, look really good and can save you at the end. And maybe if you have a plan where you were talking about, can I just play six cards this right. time? Well, I mean, I, as you yeah. can see, I didn't have a single production building, but I did make use of that, which right. got me an extra few points. So if you know you're going right. to need that thing that next round that you were talking about, then maybe, yes, grabbing that production right. building, being like, I'm going to need to do something really big next round, that's going to help you with that. Um, and then there's the end game scoring. 
Interestingly enough, I talked to you about how there's the forestry strategy when we played this um, before and how that can be really powerful because you can really get your forestry going. And it's not even just those little groves. There's one for the bigger tiles to keeping mm -hmm. those. Um, so n if you know you want to go for that, you don't want to be, as I did, just calling everything right. forest right. because you know you want to go for those for points. So it's interesting how those tiles come out. And I think that's a bigger part of the game than people give it credit for because they're always talking about the way that the production works. And that is really cool because the way that that works, you really want to maximize those by not moving to zero too quickly. Like maybe get them all uh, down here to zero so that you're using what you've produced right. before you move them to get that brick and um, glass either for end game scoring or uh, to grab those tiles, but it's really a risk, right? Like I waited one turn too long to grab a tile that I wanted as I was building up because I was like, oh, he's not going to go for that. He's doing his forest strategy. Why would he? Oh, great. That was literally everything I had waiting to build. <laughs> now it's gone. And now you have to mitigate, which I did by building up these, which I, definitely these are needed. Um, on your player board, your forest glass works, your glass maker's colony. That way you're getting and, some amount of end game it points gives even you if you don't. a way to switch gears yes. when something right. like that happens. So that happening, if this wasn't here, I I don't know what I would have done. Like right. I would have just treaded water at that point. At least that way I could save those key resources that I'd built up and get points for that. Right. Um, so it gives you a little, I was like, okay, I guess I'm doing that to kind of make up for. What I don't like. Yep, and, and I'm, I was waiting for this as well because there's definitely one big thing that I'm not... These tiles. <laughs> yeah. Because there are so many of them and there are some that work together really, really well and others that really just are disjointed as far as what they're going to do to work together or maybe, and I'll caveat this, I'm just not seeing it. Mm -hmm. Um it feels like if one player gets that strategy, and I'm actually glad this got showcased here so that you could see, like if one player gets that key strategy where a couple of tiles go together right. and are gonna match up for key end game scoring points, the other player's really in a quandary. Do I do anything with my board and actually try to play the game for myself? Or do I play catch up and block? And just be like, okay, well I see I can't let you score that, so all I'm going to do is sit here blocking you the whole game. Maybe for some people that's fun. It is not fun for me. I don't want to sit here just reacting to your turns and blocking you every step of the way. I feel bad about myself. <laughs> like, it's like, eh, okay, I'm just interfering with what you're doing. And it doesn't feel very productive for me. Um, so I don't enjoy that. And then I've played this where the tiles that come out weren't good for anybody. Like nothing matched up. So we're both like, I don't even know what to do with these. Do you know what to do with it? Like what are we going to do with these tiles? I guess we just go for the straight points that they are because nothing they're doing seems to be symbiotic, symbiotic or, or, yeah, at all. Right, yeah. um, or so synchronized or whatever, right. I almost feel like they need to be marked in some way. Like here's a couple of strategy and you kind of cull these piles so that it's not so all over the place. Um, that it's more like centered towards, okay, here's going to be forestry and this and this based on a three player game. And there's going to be at least a couple things you could go for. And then you could still choose to block people or get in their way. And maybe that's a way you want to play. But the way they come out has made my play experiences with this game drastically different and not in a good way. For me, especially in a two-player game. Now, I, I should point out that on the two-player side, you uh, one to three-player side, I should say, there are four of each. On the other side, when you play at four it's players, five. there's five of each there. However, my big issue with the game really is that there's not a lot of turnover in general. And it just becomes very stagnant. And then it's a matter of, oh, a couple of buildings churn through. So there's that. Eh. Now, there is, and as Chisholm points out, there is a card yes. here. And let me find here. So there is a card right here, the Feudal Lord, 
which says add one building from each stack to your private offer. So this is the way to mitigate that, right? To where you can play this, to where now what you're doing is literally you're going to get a blue, a fawn, and a brown building into your own personal supply from which then you can build, mm -hmm. okay? My problem with the feudal lord that I'm not super keen on, and some people, maybe the majority, don't have this problem or have this issue with it, is it's now a random draw off the top of the deck. They might work well, they might not, and it's just, eh. And then if I'm trying to play it, say, in three rounds, that's three rounds I got one less card than, it, you know, yeah. when I'm just trying to churn through. So I would love to see the market in some way, form, or fashion, like, you know how a lot of games have that conveyor belt, right? right. To where, hey, if anything's on the far right edge, it those up. white, I think that would help a lot. Or something. It doesn't have to be as drastic as, okay, discard all the buildings on the display, uh, but I, I just feel like the, the market uh, stays a little static. So we're saying with the Feudal Lord, it's actually the random yeah. tiles. Yeah, that's, so if you were able to pick and say, oh, wow, I see some great ones out there. If I, I want I'll take these that three. One, that one, that one, that works sure. because then you're take, then the, there's turnover still in the market. But right? since it's not, right. is that really going to help me? I don't know. Um, and that's a big press your luck and hope I get three that go together. And then, um, as somebody else pointed out, let's see, you can use those as a resource. Uh, there was one tile that came out, but what if that tile's not there? Because that's the tile, um, which I think was out, we had it out for a little while, where you can churn those into right. a resource. But if that's not there, they're not doing anything for me. So that, like you said, is a wasted move. And when you get cut off, yeah, there's that feeling of like, oh, I have, so I don't even get to play that? Okay. And it happened both ways, so mm -hmm. it's balanced. It happened to you and it happened to me. Um, but still, even it just happening wasn't that great. Right. Like, it didn't feel uh, so, fulfilled. Overall, thoughts on the game? Just overall, big picture. I've changed a lot in two and a half years. Yeah, so when I first played this, I just was so taken with that research resource uh, mechanism, the way it turned and how that worked. I was, done. I was like, yeah, I want this. Um, I want to play this more. Now, that doesn't feel as shiny to me. Um, I still like how that works, but I don't feel the tiles often support it. I have played this, though, and it has gone amazing, where there were a bunch of tiles that came out that were interrelated. And honestly, I'm cheering on other players, too, because I'm like, oh, that was really good for you, or oh, great move, or you really maximized that. And that's that's been fun to play. So I've had some great experiences with this game, uh, but it's not consistent. It's very much all over the place for me. There are times that I play it and I'm like, oh, that was, nothing really came out. That didn't feel like I could, right. I felt stuck and not like things flowed well this time. Um, so it's not one that I would take off the shelf. It's not one that I would like get rid of, but it's also not one I'd probably be dying to play. So you're not going to ask, hey, you you know what I want to play today? Glass Road. Yeah, it's not one that, that really sticks out for me um, among the other games out there. Uh, if someone really wanted to play it, and I mean was like, no, I really want to play Glass Road, then I'd be like, okay, sure, let's do that. Otherwise, I'd probably suggest something else. Okay. So for me, I've kind of gone the opposite direction a little bit with the caveat. To where when I first played it, I was like, eh, really? Because I think I came from old school Uwe Rosenberg big box <laughs> games. Bit Agricola, or at Labora, mm -hmm. uh, La Havre, stuff like that. So I came into this expecting this to be a game that it's not. It's a 45-minute game. Now, obviously, it plays a little bit longer as you introduce more and more players. So there's that. But I expected this to be a bigger game than it was. So it was a letdown for me when I played this a number of years ago. And I don't love it. I'm not ever going to be like, you know what I want to play today? Glass Road. However, um, and Chisholm and others in chat have pointed out that there's a lot more turnover with more and more synergies with, with the cards with more players, which yes. makes sense, yes. right? I really like the way the, re the resource wheel 
mechanism works because it hurts when you when you inadvertently lose resources because you weren't planning on losing those resources because you play them poorly, mm -hmm. which I love that. I want the punishment. If I do a poor job, it should be on me. The thing that I absolutely still do not like, though, is the static market of building tiles. So if there was some way that that cycled through better and would feel more interesting and more exciting, like, oh, what's coming out this turn, as opposed to, oh, we got two new buildings out of 16. Wee! But right. if it were six of it, because everything on the right edge or something like that or five or whatever, um, that would feel like a better ratio. Yes. Um, and I would then I would be a lot more excited about this game than I am. But so where do I fall on this overall? I liked it more now than I did a number of years ago when I last played this prior to us getting it back out for the for the show. But I also I would play it if other people want to play it. Um, but I also would not be like going and reaching for it off the shelf and saying, hey, let's play this today. Mm -hmm. Unless there were some way of changing the rules in that the market changes. That That's the big thing for me. And maybe it's um, four player and maybe it's even just a house rule of that right one falls off. Um, that still might not add super some tension. keen on house rules, but says the guy who also... Opposite. Right. House rules are fine. There's nothing wrong with house rules. Uh, it's always just that things are developed and designed for the masses. So you coming up with what's good for you in your game group, there's nothing wrong with that. You're okay. Right. House rules are okay. Um, so is there a two-player game that I've played more recently that makes me feel the way I did when this first played it? Okay, this is a reach and a little odd of an answer, and you're going to be like, really? But Shobu? Uh, but there's a reason. Okay, I... And it does make me feel the way that this did with that resource uh, wheel. Because the way that Shobu works, where you have to make your first move on your side, and then on the opposite colored board, of which you have two options, and that you have to move your piece in the same way each, it's that same give and take, I feel like. Is that a reach? Am I, I, I believe I, I, that that I feels similar because, oh no, I've moved that and I was able to do this, but my next turn, I can't move the way I need to. I'm in a corner and it's, oh, that was a mistake. And that's what's happening here with this wheel. You're making a move with one side of your common resources that in really impacts the other side where your premium resource the difference there is your the other player can impact that and make it to where you can't make that move, whereas Which that is can't why happen here. I find it better. And no, they said that go. makes you feel like that when you first played it. So I'm finding that in Shobu and I'm finding it better for that reason because there's more player interaction. And someone mentioned, I apologize, I didn't catch who, that this isn't really a game that's long enough for blocking. And I agree. I had a choice to go and block Edward, but I was going to then do what? Nothing? Like, right. that would have been bad. So I think, I mean, I could have tried it and I thought about it for a second of like, do I just go and try to sweep the leg and just, no, I don't think that's going to show the game very well if we just uh, attack each other. So I didn't go that route because I do think it's too short for that. But that does lead to a little bit of a lack of player interaction other than you taking tiles I want. Shobu, there's no I mean, lack of player right, yeah, interaction. Yeah, right, right. Everything in it is that. So yeah, that's, that would I be my two I think that's a fair point. I, I, and, and I can attest to it because every day when Jess comes over, she's like, more Shobu? I, I have it out. It's on. It is. It's. Yeah. I'm like, so, can you play that? So there's that. All right. And I'm trying to get him to play a co-op game, guys. Tell him. Tell him he should play a co-op game. I want to play Mint Cooperative. Come on, just one co-op. It's fine. It's like 118 XX. No. <laughs> All right. So there you go. That is Glass Road. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, don't forget like and subscribe down below. If you want to go one step further and help us out as well as help yourself out go to pledgehc.com 
join the herd. Uh, Jess will tell you why, because she's better at that. Yes, you want to join the herd so that you can get on the Slack channel. There's a lot of great benefits, um, but my favorite is being able to continue these conversations that we're having right now with in-depth analysis of games that are coming out, things that are on the horizon, and you don't just get to hear it from us. You're going to hear it from everybody in the herd. There's also the herd around the world, so you can find gamers like you in your area and maybe even add to your game group some more folks uh, that like the games that you like to play. So definitely consider um, pledging so that you can join the herd and get into the Slack channel and keep this conversation going with us. And on top of that, you get access to my teaching notes for the games that I do, that I prepare uh, teaches for. You get access to those to help make it easier for when you want to teach games to your game group. So check that out over on PledgeHC.com. Like and subscribe down below. That also helps us. Subscriber numbers helps you guys with being notified whenever you hit that little bell whenever we go live. That's it. We'll be back tomorrow with Yido Deluxe Edition, which is sitting in that chair right there. Um, caveat about to play. that it is it's showing off the new mechanisms, but it's kind of a uh, midway prototype in that it's using some of the old graphics, some of the new this and that, etc. So keep that in mind ahead of the Kickstarter coming from Board and Dice yes. next week, next couple of weeks, whatever it is. Soon. And we'll be playing it next, actually. Yeah, so. we're playing it this evening with a couple of folks. So Yay. we will see you guys tomorrow, 7 p.m. And if you haven't listened to the latest episode of the podcast, check it out over on heavycardboard.com, deep dive of Reef Encounter, or on your favorite podcast player. So give that a listen. Um, that's about as in-depth a review as you're going to find within this hobby. So there you go. We'll see you guys tomorrow, all right? So good game. I enjoyed it. All right. Catch you all later. Bye. Bye. Oh, I'm Edward. I'm Jess. All right. Now we'll see you all later. <laughs> Bye, guys. I enjoyed that, though. Yes. Yeah, better than fun. I expected. See? You went up. I went down. Yeah, there you go. Meet in the right? middle. It's good.